Welcome back to Asia Tonight in Business News. Japanese airline ANA is to buy 50 more Boeing 787 Dreamliners with an option for another five. The order is worth $5 billion and it's Boeing's first commercial order for this year. The first delivery will be in April 2022. The order comes after recent bad times for Boeing in the wake of problems with the 737 MAX. ANA has also decided to switch from Rolls-Royce to General Electric engines. Engine issues meant ANA had cancelled hundreds of flights in 2018. And the new jets will bring the airline's Boeing 787 fleet up to 98, which is the world's biggest. Now, aviation analyst Jeffrey Thomas joins us live. And Jeffrey is aviation editor for the West Australian newspaper and the airline's editor for Australian Aviation. Jeffrey, let's look at the timing of ANA buying the Boeing. You know, what can we read into that? And let's take a look. Let's be honest. Other airlines are feeling, you know, some sort of tightening because of COVID-19 outbreak. But ANA is going ahead and making this purchase. Well, look, indeed they are. I mean, they love the 787. As you said, they're the world's largest operator. They were the first operator and they've made it really work for them. It's a great airplane. And of course, right now, you're right, airlines are tightening their belts. But airlines with really good balance sheets, very astute airlines, say, hey, this is the time to buy airplanes because this virus will be fixed just the same way as SARS, the swine flu um, and, and the other you know, upsets that we get. These will pass and the, AVA and the industry will continue to grow. So now is a really good time to drive a harder bargain with Boeing or Airbus for that matter uh, and get a better deal. Besides which, the planes won't be delivered till 2022 um, and uh, this virus will be uh, hopefully long gone by then. Well, we know that a, &A has an option to buy another five. Do we know how soon they're going to exercise that option though? We don't know. I would say that they will exercise the option. I, I would say that they will end up with a fleet of about 120 or 130 787s. Um, you know, it really is a very versatile aeroplane. It's enabled them to open up all sorts of new routes, like, for instance, Haneda, downtown Tokyo Airport, to uh, San Jose, right in the middle of Silicon Valley. You know, th this is one of many routes. And since 2011, when ANA first put the 787 into service, Airlines around the world who operate 787s have opened up 257 new routes that, that were, didn't exist before because people want to go point to point. This is the point to point dream machine um, and a and obviously uh, can see the value in it. Uh, do we know if any other airlines are also going to be following in a &A's footsteps in making these purchases? Well, late last year, we had Emirates uh, who committed to a fleet of 30 uh, 787s. Uh, and my understanding, there are other airlines looking at uh, purchasing more. I mean, of, all, uh, uh, of the airlines that have bought the 787, and I think there's about 65 or 70 airlines that have bought it, over half have reordered the aeroplane. And that's amazing. They've sort of said, yeah, this really works for us. We want more. Australia's Qantas, for instance, has been ordering more 787s. They'll order more this year. Air New Zealand last year ordered another fleet of them as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a very success, success, successful aeroplane. The only glitch has been the Rolls-Royce engine that's had problems. And that's one of the reasons why ANA has switched to General Electric. Um, and the same, that's exactly the same as what Air New Zealand did last year, was they swapped to the GE engine because they felt a bit more comfortable with that. So saying that, are fortunes then changing for Boeing after, you know, as we know, this rough patch with the 737 MAX? Well, look, at the end of the day, the MAX is a fabulous aeroplane. And the biggest mistake that Boeing has made, and Airbus has made exactly the same mistake, and that is to assume that the pilots who are going to fly your aeroplane are well-trained, well-drilled, and are competent. Now, you know, without getting into all the fine details, uh, that's the big issue behind the, the MAX disasters and, and also similar Airbus problems in the past is the competency of the pilots who have been trained. Now, obviously, Boeing and Airbus have got to think, rethink the design of their cockpits.
Uh, and yes, there's been a lot of bad publicity for Boeing. A lot of it is simply not correct. It just simply is not correct. People say it was a rush design. It simply wasn't. It's the longest time taken for any Boeing derivative aeroplane ever. It took six years. When you consider they built the 747 from scratch in three, um, this derivative took six years, so it wasn't rushed. So there's a lot of misinformation out there, and airlines really do want, they want this aeroplane back in the air because they know it's going to be an absolutely fabulous aeroplane um, once they've made these, these small adjustments to it. Well, I want to talk about um, what's happening right now, which is the COVID-19 outbreak. You know, how much of an impact do you think sure. it has on this um, aviation sector at this point? Look, that's a very good question. And the closer you get to China, the greater the impact. The International Air Transport Association has forecast that the industry is going to take a revenue hit of about 30 um, billion US dollars. And that's, and that's not profit, that's just revenue. So instead of having a growth this year of about 4.5%, what they're now forecasting is a, is a contraction of about 0.5%. The closer you get to China, the more, the greater the impact. And the greatest impact is in, is in domestic Chinese travel. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, the industry, uh, the, the industry is very resilient to these, uh, these shocks, whether it's 9-11, SARS, swine flu, the GFC. Uh, and yes, we're going to find six months of pain. And then when, as soon as the World Health Organization announces this is over, all of a sudden you're going to get a flood of people traveling because people want to travel and air travel doubles every 15 years. All right. Thanks, Jeffrey, for your insights. We've been speaking with Jeffrey Thomas, aviation editor for the West Australian newspaper and Pleasure. airlines editor for Australian Aviation.